Yeah, what school do you go to? Oh, I go to Lasalle. You go to Lasalle? I go to Lasalle too. You do? So we sound like we're in a bar and we just met. The wonderful, beautiful podcast. Today, I'm here with Bernice. And I'm also Angel, by the way. And we're roommates. <laughs> roommates, the rainbow. The one's yeah. <laughs> we asked you guys if you have any questions related to college because we're in college. The debatable title for this video is Two College Girls. <laughs> Do something. Do something. <laughs> have two mics. <laughs> is it gonna be good advice? We'll see. First question is Is it fun? It depends. It depends. They can't see you. Oh, you can't just shake your head no and expect people to know. Oh, sorry. I think it's fun depending on your course or if you actually like your course. Yeah, that's one fact there. Mm. But also the people around you. The people around you, for sure. For your sure. friends. Oh, wow. Is it fun for you? It's fun for me because of the people around me. Aww. Not you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Goodbye. Anyway, yes, it is fun, especially with the people around me. Because I have a fun set of friends. If you haven't seen my set of friends, you can watch my <laughs> week in my life. Is it a week in my life? A, sc a school yeah. vlog, whatever. But it can be fun, um, especially if you like what you're doing or you... Not That's not to say that it's always fun. Yeah. It's been hell sometimes. Not sometimes, all the time. But you know, oh. the people around you make it bearable tolerable least, yeah for sure okay tips regarding public speaking like reports debate thesis defense and stuff Ooh. Ooh. you're good at that well because in my old school i feel like we were very much trained or at least i was kind of desensitized to public speaking and to speaking in general so i guess my advice is to just be a little bit of a narcissist <laughs> and just be like everybody loves listening to what i say or like talk to yourself in the mirror sometimes you, when you talk to yourself you're like damn i make so much sense right now yeah but well i understand it's much harder in, in, with an audience and public and stuff i think well i used to be so good at reporting and you know presenting in front of mm. other people but then i think the pandemic changed ah, that because yeah. you don't really see the faces of other people so you kind of get used to just like talking to yourself mm. and then when face-to-face -face classes resume bam, i just i get scared and nervous mm -hmm. super mm. but then you know i think it really takes time yeah maybe just tips if if you're presenting in front of other people what you can do is look at their foreheads really yeah huh yeah so it kind of looks like you're looking at them like eye to eye but really no you're just looking at their foreheads mm. or I, oh, I go, go ahead or find a group of people for example your friends you're in the same classroom with your friends <laughs> just look at <laughs> them guys <laughs> aren't aren't gonna f with you while you present but it's nice to look at like familiar faces yeah so sometimes i look at familiar faces and then they just go like yeah keep going keep mm. going and then they're like supportive but that also depends on your friends everything does boil back to your friends huh <laughs> yeah i think well we learned this in class wow mm. i actually learned something but like you should <laughs> pay a shit ton for it yeah yeah mm. but like another tip is this is more of like a percent presenting tips or mm -hmm. something i guess you should really know yes what you're presenting sure. so that you don't get rattled when you're in front mm -hmm. and then you can just keep on rambling and rambling because you know true. what you're talking about and then you you won't even notice that yeah. the presentation's done. Yeah, because it's like when you know your presentation or what you're saying back to back, mm -hmm. like you're not going to feel nervous about it. If mm -hmm. it's your report, if you're, it's your own sh then even if you get a little bit nervous, you're not going to run out of things to say. Or at least you have just the project in mind. Don't have yeah. your audience too much in mind, I guess, if that distracts you. But if you just want to get your point across, yeah, then there's that. Also, sh they also mentioned thesis defense. I think one thing that really helped us, well, we haven't defended it, we're not yet done, but we did have like our readings. And I think one thing that really helped us was when we had 
a mock defense yeah. with our friends. Yeah. Tell, tell us, oh, we're thesis mates, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell, oh, tell them well, what we did. Okay, so before our last reading, because we had three readings, and I'm, we failed. Not really failed. Uh-huh. Mm. But we didn't get approved for the first two. So the third reading was our very last chance. Our last chance. If we didn't get it right, yeah. we'd have to repeat the whole year. The whole year? Yeah, we did. Cause we oh, have to yeah, right. It's seasonal, you know, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, before our presentation, day we decided to do a mock thesis 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 thesis, thesis. thesis. mock defense mock defense we decided to do a mock defense fixated on the word thesis <laughs> but anyway but anyway what we did was like i basically chatted my high school friends i was like guys can you please yeah. help us can you just enter this zoom at like this certain time and then we're gonna present our thesis to you and tell us what you think we need to ap- improve on or what we need to focus on mm-hmm. so it was like her friends my friends also my our other thesis mates kyla her mm-hmm. her friends too and like it was very helpful because sometimes we do know we do in fact know our own shit like we know what we're trying to say we know our project like like the back of our hands but our audience doesn't yeah and the panelists don't understand it and sometimes it's a lot better to gain like a third person perspective because sometimes you focus on things that you don't really need to focus on Mm -mm. or there are things that are clear to you but not clear to other people yeah so that was very helpful how'd you handle the hell weeks we had a rough hell week this past week (laughs) Oh. It was bad. It was like bad. I've never experienced anything. There like was that. like laundry all over the floor. <laughs> there was like hair all over the floor. Hair all over the floor, <laughs> bruh. Mm. So we don't handle them. <laughs> we don't handle them very well. Obviously, no. Obviously, how do we handle them? We cry. We cry. We just. Well, one thing I noticed when Hell Week happens or like midterms or finals. We 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 go out a lot and then uh. do do parang study sessions. Not really study sessions, but like work sessions with our friends. Mm, mm. Cause if we stay here in the condo, we're just gonna rot. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, at the same time, last week we oh, like, oh, yeah. like the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Oh my god, I was so <laughs> stressed out of my mind, dude. But as I was saying, it was kind of helpful. Not really helpful that we lost our internet, but like we every time we do leave the condo, you know, or we leave the house or we work with other people, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot easier to stay a little bit more focused. Anyways, how do you cope with it? I don't know, dog. I don't even know how I, I reach know. this point. I don't know how I'm, I'm still alive right now. Um, I think it. what helps me cope with it is that I like what we do. Oh, that's true. And like, even if I'm having like a really difficult time, I know that I believe in what I'm trying to say with my projects. The thing mm. is, we don't, it might not be relatable to other people because with us, we don't, really study like we don't yeah. have we don't do tests and all that shit. it's very output based so find the meaning behind your work your motivations the hearts yeah it sounds corny but for real for real i really don't know what course to take ah shit that's sad <laughs> <laughs> how did you figure out what course you wanted to take well i didn't really decide on what course like what's my final course or something like that Mm -hmm. but i really knew back then that i wanted to take something that's related to the field of arts why do i keep doing this jazz hands (laughs) they don't see it it's fine i make a lot of hand gestures too yeah anyways i just i just knew i wanted to take something that's related to the field of arts i think what made me decide to take on com arts was because of the school that I chose. Mm-hmm. I also didn't know what to what school to choose before. I just knew big four. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not the right person to ask. This well, question. I mean, me, you can kind of pick something up from that because it's like you know, yeah. you kind of have an idea of what you want. It's just that you're not sure which path to take. Yeah. Thank you for verbalizing my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. We're- <laughs> Okay, well for me, I initially wanted, I was very set on having film mm. um, in Benioff in art school. But then I was starting to like second guess myself. I don't know if it's because of the circumstances at that time, because it was like the pandemic and all that. And I was like, why would I take film? 
during the pandemic like it's not like I can rent out the equipment there and I'm just gonna be wasting my time like I just I didn't didn't feel right to me even though I do love film um and so actually one of my friends who took up film showed me the flow chart or the courses that you get when you take calm arts and I was like huh that's kind of like what I want <laughs> so I was like I think yes yeah. and this my course now um communication arts was not in my three choices like top three choices at all I don't even know what my choice I think I chose all business courses when I entered LaSalle. Yeah, because I was like, why would I go to LaSalle for like art? Because I was like, BSB. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the f*** up right there. <laughs> but I took all business courses. Mm. I think my, my sapanga ata dun, I think I took legal management and stuff because I was like, why are you doing that? Why are you, do you think I'm too stupid for that? No, that's so far from like you, that's ooh, true. your interests. That's true. But it was like my secondary interest because I was like, mm. when I was entering LaSalle, I was like, eh, I don't want to hear about LaSalle because I'm... I'm I wanna go to Benilde. But then, haha, funny funny, times change. And I was like, huh, I feel like I'd, I'd be boxing myself too much in film if I were to take it. So now I have like something that's way too wide of a range now because it's true. like journalism and broadcasting and all that. I like it. There's a, it's very um, concept writing oriented rather than technical. Yeah, fun fact I also wanted to go to Benilde mm -hmm. before going to La Salle. Mm -hmm. Not for film, but like for multimedia arts. So I guess it's fate. Cause if if we if we met, <laughs> if we if we both went to to Benilde, we, we we would probably still be friends. <laughs> Why are you covering your whole face right now, dog? <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. You know, I think there's like a little bit of you who kind of knows what you want and knows what you're good at and what you think you'll be able to tolerate for four years. And even if you don't know or even if you change your mind, hopefully you have the opportunity to change that or you have the opportunity to to swerve or to do something about it. Just trust yourself. Um, You know in yourself that you're not gonna let yourself go yeah. or like you're not gonna let yourself fuck up that much. You can fuck up, but like, do you want to go to Pablo Bay and say anything? So it's fine. Hopefully. It's be fine. Yeah. Was it hard to socialize with others and find real friends? During the pandemic, yes. Because mm. I find it hard to build real connections during the pandemic because it's all online. Lang. It was difficult during the pandemic because mm. I just find it harder to approach yeah. before. Because you just chat with the person out of nowhere just because you wanted to pick up friends. Unless you're like really extroverted or something. Even me, who's already an extrovert, can't do that yeah. during the pandemic. So What about IRL? IRL, mas, well for me, it's okay. It's easier to find friends or connections because get to actually talk to them and all mm -hmm. that stuff get to bond with them you know yeah i was really scared in to enter face to face because i know in myself i'm really not sociable mm. like i'm not the most approachable person and it's because you're pretty well thank you but you're a pretty person and people still approach you <laughs> So, I think I really just needed to kapalan mo ako. Like, I needed to <laughs> put myself the f*** out there. I remember it was like the first, second day. I was group mates with one person. Oh, you guys know Mags. <laughs> I I barely knew them at that time. But then, I didn't want to like just go home. I was with you at that yeah. time. I didn't want to just go home. I wanted to like, you know, like while it's still early. While there wasn't like much like super hard responsibilities. I was like, hey Mags, can I go to your condo? <laughs> and then they were like, yeah okay <laughs> and the thing is i think i also have like a radar for people i, I want to be friends with and people i don't or like not really i want to be friends with but people i think i'll get along with and i was like okay max looks gay looks queer looks like an artist and i was like cool i want to be friends with that one <laughs> i choose that one <laughs> so yeah um don't try to be friends with people just because you think they're cool or something you will always attract the type of people or like you attract what you kind of are i guess mm. so in a sense you'll always find your way to people who you'll get along with just yeah. trust it yeah just try yeah. and try until you find yeah the right people for you yeah also don't like which is a little tip don't go opening up that fast mm. to other people do not like the first boy you see the first boy or girl who shows interest in you because you're gonna meet so much other people so like there's an abundance of people in college just a warning usually like 
you know how in the pandemic you have a pandemic set of friends that yeah. you don't really talk to yeah, anymore yeah, yeah. so it's like that yeah people go come and go mm-hmm. pretty fast in college and i remember we hung out with some people who we really don't hang out with yeah. now so favorite group mates wow they can't see you <laughs> dang it stopping it's me it's me yeah my favorite groupmates are my friends bernice like everybody in that video that i mm. showed you bernice skyla mags joshua ella them, them. <laughs> period period they're the only people i trust in this <laughs> whole <laughs> campus <laughs> favorite project i love the film project yeah production stuff production stuff i also love the conceptualizing stuff mm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to name like a specific project? Well, it's kind of related to subject. I feel like our production class was one of my favorites because mm. we got to like do a multiple works there. Another one is the capstone one. The capstone yeah. one, yeah, for sure. I also shared that in the yeah in the vlog. But that was also really nice. Do you want to share about that one? She was my groupmate there. If they, if you guys don't know what that what we're talking about. Oh, basically we had this project in our subject capstone mm-hmm. cap caps. I don't know. What was the prompt? Not the prompt. Pr- instruction. <laughs> hey, I, the prompt was to like choose a social issue and then have a communication. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's usually the prompt of every single project yeah, yeah, yeah. in our course. Mm. And then we decided to feature. Mm-hmm. Um, interview too. An interview the bereaved family members of EJK victims. Mm-hmm. So we went to foundations and all that stuff. Went to cafes. Cafes. Um, Eiji Kalinga and Selina the Cafe. We were writing a story for um, from their point of view. Because mm-hmm. usually we feel like stories from EJK is usually about the victim, the victim itself. Which is obviously important. But at the yeah. same time, I think we should also focus on um, the people that they leave behind. You know, the parents, the kids, especially the mothers and the wives and mm-hmm. all that. So they're mostly women who are left behind because it's usually men who are Victims. killed. Yeah. yeah, victimized. And at the same time, well, there are men who are victimized through the K word, but there are also mm-hmm. women who are victimized through like R word and yeah. putting them in jail and all that. So it's really dark. And yeah, it was it was always so heavy too. Yeah, the interviews. We couldn't disclose them. I remember like we would go home and be like, yeah, we would just sit down in complete silence after like doing the interviews. We sit down in silence for like three hours just staring at the wall. <laughs> and like, well, I know we sound like really privileged fucks right now, but something I hope that we can actually work on in the in the future. Yeah. So that's one of our favorite favorite projects. What is this? A whole ass message. What? I'm gonna submit it through a pic because it's gonna be quite long. Mag- mag- overshare. So I've been feeling this. I don't excel as well as I want to and hindi ko alam what I'm doing wrong because I submit on time, do my parts in group parts, even lead. I like recite if the prof permits and sumalir naman sa mga orgs and yet I feel like I'm not doing enough. There's this itch to go all out pero parang I feel so limited. I know that this is not the level of excellence that I can or should achieve. Feel ko hindi ko ta- di ako tao kung di ako halos mamatay sa sobrang busy. Eme. Ooh. Oh wow! <laughs> Did I ghost right there? <laughs> Maybe my question is: Have you ever felt like this before, and how do you deal with this? Because I don't know what I'm gonna do. Have I ever? Fe- have we ever felt like this before? Um, maybe last night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we do feel it like that pretty often. The thing is, I don't know what to say because I struggle with the same boat. Yeah. But what did we talk about last night? Maybe what were you we... telling me last night? Because I was the one having the self-doubt. Something about you not meeting the expectations that you set for yourself. Uh-huh. And in the end, it disappoints you and you feel like you're not good enough or something. And I was saying yesterday that it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay lang yung gagi. Okay lang yung gagi. Gagi wag. Gagi na ba? wag. Anyways, parang, yeah, such pretty normal na parang sometimes you set expectations that you can't reach. Pero, I guess it's normal to sometimes not reach that expectation. Maybe your expectation is too high. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, mm-hmm. setting your expectations high. But like, it needs to be humane, for the lack of a better term. Humane. humane. What do you mean humane? Kind of like an expectation that will not kill you mm-hmm. if you don't get to reach it or not kill you in the process of reaching it. Okay. But like, still high enough that it's the best that you know you can do, you know? Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? 
Yeah, I think I kind of get what you mean. Like, it's okay to set your expectations high, but like, you have to kind of train yourself to not be so mm. insanely bedridden if you're not able to reach it. Yeah. And that's still, that's something I still struggle with. Yeah, me too. Even though you think that you're not doing good enough, you probably are. Yeah. I mean, you're doing something and that's already great. Mm-hmm. So. And I think you're also probably doing much better, much better than you think. Like you're, pro I don't think you're screwed right now. You're just hopefully not. Hopefully not. <laughs> but like, it seems like your worry is more of like, oh, I feel like I'm not doing good mm. enough or not doing well enough. Um, I'm not saying that you should try and try until you die or until you can't anymore or keep you know like don't try as much maybe there's something that you need to also observe like with how you work or what you've been doing how do i say this like see what you're focusing on right now like oh i like, like what we said that maybe you know everything but other people or like your professors it's not translating to them so it's like maybe there's some things that you're focusing too much on or putting too much energy on or maybe you have a tendency to not like manage which part of your work you're supposed to put most of your energy on so mm -mm. maybe that's also something that you can check up on hopefully i'm making any sense right now but feel ko di ako tao kung di ako alas mamartay sobrang busy um in english i was like i feel like i'm not a person if i'm not dying of stress or being busy that's fucked up yeah girl i feel like no <laughs> a lot of people got so used to the hustle culture mm -hmm. it's not a good thing yeah i used to think it's a good thing because i could get a lot of shit done within a day or something like that mm -hmm. but i realized that it's not good for me like physically mentally emotionally like mm -hmm. yes i could do a lot of things but i could accomplish a lot of things but like in the process of it i'm a i didn't know that i was already sacrificing my well-being yeah. And I only realized that this college, because if before I could go like one day, two days without mm. sleep, now I couldn't go like a day without a, a day nap. without a nap at least. Because mm. I realized that that's how my brain could work better mm -hmm. if I get enough rest and if I a lot more time for myself. I feel like I well with my old school, I I like my first all nighter was probably in fourth grade, and I was just tired out of my mind with mm. my old school like i was so tired and i barely got any credit for it like i feel like i didn't get like the results i wanted and then when i went to college and i feel like i wasn't as tired as i used to be but i was kind of getting a little bit more like um how do i say like i get a little bit more reward out of it or i get a little bit more recognition for it like now i just i don't really have much tolerance for staying up or like beating myself to be able to like work or like meet this deadline like i'm not into it anymore it doesn't make me happy and mm. the only thing it gives you is this false sense of security that you're working hard or you're doing mm. good enough and it doesn't mean that you know and i have friends that have been like you know like sometimes they have like really bad coping mechanisms like they do like they have alcohol and nicotine and all that Actually, they party and all that and because it's like they're also so busy and they're mm -hmm. so stressed and like, i have friends who get rushed to the hospital and then i recently have another friend who like posted on his instagram story like i got rushed to the hospital today like i'm dying dude and it's like your body can only take so much it's only it's about time it's only about time when it's gonna how do you say it? Come back to you? It's gonna catch up to you. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, go, it's going to catch up to you. And whether you see it right now or not, like, okay, you work hard right now. You're an overachiever right now. You're doing so good right now. Who's to say that when you're 30, you're not, like, burnt out? <laughs> like, don't want to do yeah. anything anymore. So, enjoy what you have right now. I know some people don't have the privilege to enjoy what they have right now, but, you know, try to treat yourself a little bit kinder. Stop subscribing to this hustle culture yeah. bull. Anyways, get well soon. Love and light. He like. What course did you take? I don't know why I was trying to keep it secret for so long. I took communication arts. I think it's because I was embarrassed that I took communication arts. Why? I don't know, because it didn't sound as cool as film. And like, 
I feel like there's this notion that people who take communication arts are just people who don't know what they... <laughs> they or they want to be reporters. <laughs> they want to be reporters. They want to be, like, in ABS-CBN or something. Which, I mean, if I, I, I would love that. Yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it's just a stereotype of calm arts, I guess. Yeah, I used to think the part of calm arts was easy or whatever. I was wrong. I will I admit that it's a little bit more fun than... At least for me, because I like what I do. Mm. You know that Freedom Mall post that was, like, chill lang pala mga calm arts? Oh, my. Drawing, drawing, lang do. <laughs> We've not drawing. drawn a single thing. <laughs> I we choose we draw storyboards, storyboards and posters if needed. Posters with oil pastel. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. Just so you know. <laughs> okay, next. How to balance acads and maintaining social life with friends outside your block or class? Oh, I don't have any friends outside my class yes, or my do. block. Huh? Darren. But those are high school friends. But still, the, technically speaking, they're outside the block. Ah, uh, well, I guess we, uh, my other friends and I, we have like a pretty solid understanding that we're very busy and we have very different schedules. Very adult Actually, friendships. me too. Yeah. My stronger friends. Yeah. I do love like when we get to hang out with them. I think that's one of the pleasures mm-hmm. of like, you know, a lot of people are like, ah, I don't want to lose my high school friends and stuff. But because like the times that you meet them is a little bit like less often now it's kind of like something you really look forward mm. to the endorphins get I guess you tired. really just have to calculate mm-hmm. your schedule and stuff like yeah. when are you free when are your friends free and make an effort to yeah you know. and like when do you need to prioritize your mm-hmm. god's academics hey, why did I say it <laughs> <Akads. laughs> it was it was the same but I would say akads or akad academics Academic. <laughs> like Akad. akads Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> uh. Pros and cons and journey <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I'm not in any orgs. Angel is not any. Oh, angel. I was... The, here's the thing about me and orgs. I stay there for like a term or a year max. And then I just leave. Because I can't... I don't know. Like I, I feel like I'm doing so much work for no grades. It's just like another like line in my resume. I don't know. I just feel like I wasn't really into it. I wasn't an org person. And I know that there are lots of org people who are like, Yes! <laughs> org is live! I'm like, good for you. I can't. I want to sleep. So yeah. The pros is you can get a lot of connections there. Connections, with friends. friends. Yeah. Yes, friends. Cons is like it takes up your, your time, your energy, effort. Mm-hmm. And like what she said, you're doing work for like no pay, no grades. Unless you really like what yeah, you're doing, you know. That's then true. There's no case for that. So. Mm-hmm. I guess if you want to join orgs, just make sure you like the org you're joining. I think joining. you should also do your research on those orgs. Don't yeah. just join an org because somebody was just like, come on, come here. Yeah. <laughs> Join our org. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're like on Freedom Wall. <laughs> <laughs> you're running for something and they're like, I have never experienced this type of... I don't fucking know. Mm. I don't even know what the drama is, but there's like, there's always org drama. If you're there, if you're there for the drama, then good for you. There's another long question here. So, freshman, I'm kind of unsure about my current course because I'm taking up arts and I'm really happy to have this privilege, but now I'm unsure because I don't know what to do when I grad, but I can't see myself taking up anything else. I think I need to do more research about mm. my course and career paths. Hoo hoo, sad face. Yeah, that's definitely like yeah. one way to do it, like doing more research. Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of had the same situation when I was starting college, but I'm, I don't know where I'm going mm-hmm. after college or what do I want to do mm-hmm. after, you know. Mm-hmm. But then throughout the course of Calm Arts and my whole jor- journey, my whole yeah. journey. Mm. But um, eventually, I did get to figure out like what I wanted to do after. So I guess trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. And plus, like when you get more into the course, you're start you're gonna start to see all the careers associated with yeah. that course. Like for example, if you're into film, like what if like some people get into film because they want to be directors. That's not always the case. Like sometimes people really find their passion in um, production design. And, yeah, costume design and, and writing and all that stuff that's just an example so ho- there's probably examples in whatever course it is that you're gonna take i think i'd like to encourage people to unsubscribe to the idea that if you're in the arts you're automatically going to struggle really hard Mm-mm. although i am aware 
that there is realistically there is like a struggle. Know, a struggle but you know i i look at all the people i know in the arts field like family members who are in the arts field and they're doing fine <laughs> I don't really know anyone who super suffered because they chose art. I do know people who have very much regretted not choosing art. Yeah. So, if you have the privilege, go take it and don't waste it. Oh, you can't see us. We're doing thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs ups. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. You'll find it. You'll find your path. One way or another. <laughs> One way or another. I guess. What do you do when you don't feel like studying but you have to? Oh, I don't study. We don't study. We do readings. We do readings. We do... It's more of writing. Like writing. a lot of writing. Like a lot. Like a lot. Don't force it if you can. Yeah. Just go with the flow. <laughs> don't take it from me. I can't... I don't know. I'm not I'm not gonna give advice for that because I truly suck at studying. Oh! Go to a cafe. Yeah. Go somewhere else. Leave the place. Yeah. Leave where you are. You feel stuck. You feel disgusting. Um, take a on, shower. Take a shower. Put on some makeup. Put on a bra. Put on shoes. Leave. That often gets you there. Romanticize mm. it. Put a make a little make a little time lapse. And post it on your Instagram. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. At least, even if you don't study, people at least think you study. <laughs> <laughs> Next. How do you deal with burnout? I feel like I'm still in a burnout. Me I too. feel like I'm still crisping up in here just getting roasted do you get low scores po ba? if yes ano pong feeling nyo and ano ginagawa ninyo i don't <laughs> yeah, i was like i was thinking what, what what's the last low score that we got it's not low scores but sometimes they're high scores that i feel like should have been higher mm. i just okay i i used to do this thing where i just literally don't look at my grades oh, and yeah. recently it's been much more difficult to do that because a lot of the time, we really need to listen to the critique and to improve on the next one. Eh, kung nakakuha ka ng low score, okay lang yan. Eh, ganun talaga sa college. Ang mahalaga, pumapasa ka. Pag kita mo ng low score mo, umayak ka lang. Tapos na. It is what it is. Move on ka na sa yeah, next. Yeah, there's nothing you can really do about it. It's, I've had low score. It's fine. It's, yeah. what's done is done. Mm-hmm. And then, what's, well, the only thing left to do is to be better the next time. That's true. And at least you give a shit about yeah. it and do something about it you don't just sit there and be like ah shit i guess i'm i suck forever you if it if it's difficult for you to to process it at that time just attack the professor or the teacher at hand just just get rid of all the blame you have in yourself put it in the assigned authority you're gonna be like that's because you didn't teach me well or something but that's only like a temporary fix if it you know or blame it on something else. Blame it on social media. Doom social scrolling. Doom scrolling. Blame it on your family. Ah, oh, if you guys didn't fight last night. Blame it on someone else and then wait until you can stomach blaming yourself in a mature way. What the fuck are these advices? <laughs> <laughs> on second thought, um, we're not that qualified. <laughs> we're not qualified at all. Take none of these. <laughs> Nothing should resonate right now. <laughs> Leave what doesn't resonate, yeah. and it's the whole podcast. Me prof mo ba na tamad? Yeah. Oh f- yeah. <laughs> uh, I swear, when I graduate, I'm gonna talk all oh, my. Sh- <laughs> Wait, I've actually already tried talking my shit. Like, if you listen to like the <laughs> podcast about male validation, I I talked a little bit there but yeah there are profs that are like i don't even know like they just rolled out of bed and they're like Shit, i have a <laughs> teaching job today <laughs> They'd be do like, i let me look at the guy do I? what is it a holiday today <laughs> <laughs> i like how I, I i just know who you're talking about is it worth it to drop your only close friends because they ghost you when you have group works yeah get rid of wait them. Do an intervention first. What an intervention? Ah. Like talk to them first. Well, it, what if she's the only one who's who's functioning? So it's like them versus her. Please give us more context. Like, has this happened once or twice? Okay, okay. If it's happened like more than once and you've already talked to them, then probably yeah. get rid of them. Like, not even you don't even have to get rid of them. If they're okay as friends, then fine. You can keep them yeah. as friends. But like, get someone else to be your groupmate. Having good group mates is a lifesaver for you. Yeah, it's a non-negotiable. Yeah. Okay. That's all, Rina. Talk about now? Any yeah. last words? Kanyan.
Kami nga, patapos na. <laughs> Ganito pa kami. <laughs> Kayo pa. <laughs> Do it. Stop shaking the whole table. Sorry. I have anxiety. <laughs> Everybody, we're <laughs> gonna sleep. We're gonna sleep. We're in our pajamas. cute pajamas to sleigh. Okay, okay, sleigh. Okay, okay. Okay, bye guys. Uh, I don't know how to do outros. Outro. The wonderful, beautiful podcast. Something you wish you knew before entering college. That was like pre-pandemic, so. That's true. I've changed a lot. I don't know. I don't remember eh. who I was before. It was all my trauma. <laughs> She's having like a full bone existential <laughs> crisis. I don't know who I was before. <laughs> I don't know who she is. Yeah. They can't see you. <laughs> you can't just shake your head no and expect people to know. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Also, you need to be closer to the hello microphone like this. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you can just be an AS. Please don't. Are you trying to seduce my audience? No. Don't just go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's one more. Okay, no, 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 okay. no. It's not that video. It's not that video. Is college fun for you? For me, yes. For me? Yeah, is it fun for you? Yes, it's fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you losing it right now? Yung kaibigan mo, hindi nag-open up. Ang ganda lang yung sagot.